Hello everyone. Welcome to SUSECON 2021. Hope you're having a wonderful conference so far. My name is Pranay Bakre. I'm a principal solutions engineer at ARM. And today going, we are going to talk about object detection and real-time analytics at the edge with NVIDIA GPU enabled K3S cluster. So this is the agenda uh, of our session. Uh, we are going to be talking about the challenges, uh, a little bit of history on edge computing challenges. Um, then we'll move towards uh, how the uh, edge uh, devices or the gateways have evolved uh, over the years. Uh, we are also going to talk about uh, Project Cassini, uh, which is uh, an open and collaborative, it's a standard-based initiative uh, from ARM to deliver a, a cloud-native uh, software experience uh, across a secure ARM uh, edge ecosystem. Um, then we are going to talk about how containers at the edge um, with AI, uh, with GPU, solve uh, these uh, some of these problems. Um, uh, then we'll make a segue into the actual use case, um, intelligent video analytics with uh, NVIDIA DeepStream uh, with K3S and how uh, DeepStream and K3S uh, together uh, make up for a compelling solution to be uh, leveraged uh, in this uh, scenarios. And then uh, the architecture of the use case that we have built. Uh, and finally, we'll uh, have a live demo uh, to see the actual uh, use case in action. Right. So, <clears throat> what are the uh, some challenges uh, that I think most of us know so far uh, at the edge uh, that we face? Right. So, first of all, is the resource constraints. So, these uh, small edge devices often do not have the huge uh, compute capacity uh, of their cloud counterparts. Now, these devices are not designed to be managed at scale uh, in resource constraint environments. Second one is uh, latency and bandwidth requirements. So I think we all know that uh, uh, applications deployed at the edge that might be sensitive to latency and bandwidth requirements that are not fulfilled by uh, uh, cloud. Uh, then the third is uh, data proximity. So there are edge deployments that are required to be close to the edge to be able to make that intelligent data processing decisions close to the source. In many cases, this means providing AI and ML close to the data source to be able to keep up with the growing data being generated. Um, then there is scale. Similarly, I mean, the scalability of these uh, IoT endpoints and how that influences the uh, aggregation uh, that needs to be to happen uh, for these edge devices uh, and these computing platforms is important. And last but not the least, security. Uh, security principles uh, from the data center don't necessarily apply as is uh, for all edge scenarios. And also the since the device landscape is so fragmented that there is a growing need for standardization of security principles uh, at the edge that's integrated between software and hardware. Okay, so now let's look at uh, evolution of the edge. So. Uh, what we are seeing with all of this is an evolution uh, of the edge. Uh, so historically, the fixed functions uh, performed outside of the data center included some sort of network function management. And from a software perspective, uh, it's all a single purpose RTOS or real-time operating system environment. Uh, what's changing in the stack is becoming more of a, um, an intelligent computing platform, uh, ultimately leading to the emergence of what we are calling the AI edge which can perform high level functions to be able to make those timely decisions. Now, performing these intelligent functions at the edge has many benefits. Um, it significantly reduces backhaul to the cloud. It cuts, cuts latency, improves reliability, efficiency, and security, the challenges that we talked about. And in a world where models need to, or may need to evolve uh, in real time as insights uh, from these global device deployments come first. So um, moving on to Project Cassini, right? So to help this AI edge transition, um, ARM uh, announced uh, Project Cassini, uh, the open collaborative uh, standard uh, based initiative 
uh, to deliver a cloud native software experience across a secure ARM edge ecosystem. Now, Project Cassini is built on three foundational component, uh, the ARM system ready program uh, that launched last week at uh, ARM's annual conference uh, dev summit. It's a, a foundational certification program uh, with the vision of enabling software to work seamlessly across a vibrant and diverse ecosystem of hardware. Now it builds on the existing server ready program, uh, setting the standards for a broader set of devices, uh, initially in the infrastructure edge and IoT edge segments. The second one is security APIs and certification programs trusted by developer communities and across workloads through PSE certified and Parsec. Parsec is platform abstraction for security. Uh, it's an open source initiative based on uh, the PSE API. It provides a secure uh, ROT abstraction and common runtime security services for applications in an architecture agnostic manner. Uh, ARM has contributed Parsec to the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, as a community sandbox project. And the third one is reference solutions for a Cloud Native Edge uh, developed in partnership with the ecosystem. So now let's talk about containers at the edge and AI with uh, GPU. So why containers at the edge make for uh, ideal candidates to run at the edge, right? Uh, we start with that. We all know that those are lightweight and highly portable uh, deploying uh, application in form of containers and then eventually microservices makes much more sense uh, since uh, because of these edge how uh, these devices have the compute capabilities. Uh, so containers make an ideal candidate for that. Uh, in terms of uh, taking advantage of the GPUs, uh, there are the heavy workloads, uh, especially the AI LML workloads. Uh, containers can take advantage of, so devices like uh, Jetson, uh, NVIDIA Jetsons, uh, the Jetson family platform, um, Jetson Nano, uh, these, have those GPU capabilities and containers can take advantage of those GPUs to process these high performance workloads. Uh, then latency, since it's all close to uh, the data source, uh, we observe a much more lower latency and uh, than uh, dealing with, with the cloud controller uh, here, since all of that is local. And that actually, uh, makes sense for local AI inferencing and analytics. So analytics uh, will happen at the edge location using these containers and uh, leveraging the GPU uh, workloads, the power of it, and uh, can be uh, turned all locally and um, uh, done the simulations and analytics uh, at the edge. Uh, that reduces uh, the uh, data hosting costs uh, in the cloud um, and which makes a much more compelling argument to have everything at the edge location. And uh, last one is it's secure architecture since we do not need to manage um, a lot of uh, security aspects uh, that come with the cloud, but we need to focus on uh, the edge location uh, with physical security and device security. And we saw with Parsec uh, and Project Cassini, uh, we can achieve uh, those aspects of it uh, in a cloud agnostic or in a uh, vendor agnostic manner. So now uh, what's an intelligent video analytics with the DeepStream and T3? So before we go there, we need to understand what is NVIDIA DeepStream uh, and what is K3S, right? So I think everyone knows about K3S. So let's talk about NVIDIA DeepStream for a minute. So in, uh, DeepStream is an SDK uh, that delivers a complete uh, uh, streaming and analytics toolkit for real-time uh, AI-based uh, uh, video and image understanding and multi-sensor processing. So it's about, it, it provides a set of uh, features uh, out of the box to develop uh, those building blocks um, for uh, building or creating deep neural network platforms. So you don't have to, so users uh, don't have to start from scratch. They can take those uh, building blocks and can build on top of that. Uh, it also provides some uh, plugins to bring these uh, complex, so AI and ML, I mean, these tasks are uh, uh, complex in their own regard. So the, uh, it 
So do you stream, uh, the, it provides a uh, set of plugins, hardware uh, accelerated plugins to bring these complex processing tasks into a uh, stream processing pipeline. And uh, container support for, so all of the Jackson uh, platforms, including Jackson Nano, uh, Xavier, Xavier NX, are all uh, supported by NVIDIA DeepStream and they, they can, those containers can run uh, on top of it. So, so as we know uh, that K3S is a um, orchestration uh, tool uh, based on Kubernetes uh, and it's an upstream uh, distribution. So uh, with K3S, we can achieve a quick and reliable application deployments uh, in those resource considered environments because K3S has been designed to work on uh, edge and cloud devices as a whole, right? It has been designed to work on these low memory footprint devices and it's a, a production grade uh, uh, distribution. Uh, and K3S, uh, it provides access to these hardware resources uh, for these NVIDIA GPUs uh, through the device uh, plugin framework. So it's based on Kubernetes, the device plugin framework, but K3S enables that and uh, it uh, provides a mechanism for the, these containers to leverage the power of these uh, GPUs. Uh, so these uh, deep stream containers deployed in a K3S cluster and running on an NVIDIA Jackson uh, platform, uh, in this case, Nano, would give us a mechanism and means to achieve uh, these uh, uh, orchestration level uh, details and uh, performance from uh, on these uh, small uh, devices. And uh, since these uh, analytics and object detection, I think we talked about it earlier, to uh, will happen directly at the edge devices or at the edge location. So everything will be self-contained and uh, it can happen at uh, any different uh, location. So there are multiple real-time applications to it, like a toll booth where uh, a camera is pointed to uh, uh, the highways and uh, it can detect a lot of things. Uh, it can provide a stream to uh, these deep stream SDKs running on a K3S cluster and uh, that all can happen uh, at the edge location. Okay, so now let's talk about the architecture of the use case. So here uh, you see an edge location uh, with a camera uh, that's providing multiple uh, so video streams uh, and it's uh, a USB camera that's connected directly to the Jetson Nano. Now um, you see two uh, different video feeds. So uh, what what those mean is in the live video feed, uh, the camera is pointed towards a parking lot and uh, it's able to detect uh, whatever objects are there in the stream and it's providing it uh, to the Jetson Nano. Uh, in the second one, uh, the CAN video feed. So uh, in that case, uh, a video is playing on a monitor and uh, the camera is pointed towards that monitor and it's recording those streams and then sending it to uh, the Jetson Nano. Now, let's talk about the right-hand side. So in, on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, <clears throat> these platforms run a flavor uh, called uh, L40 or Linux for Tegra that's based on uh, Ubuntu 18.04. And uh, this operating system along with the CUDA uh, X drivers. Uh, so we uh, here we have the CUDA 10.2 comes um, as an SDK um, and is packaged into what's called uh, Jetpack. So uh, which is a uh, uh, it's a comprehensive uh, software stack uh, for the Jetson family uh, of uh, products. In this case, Jetson Nano, uh, and has uh, all these dependencies and libraries built in. And we are using the Jetpack version 4.4. Uh, then we have deployed a K3S cluster, uh, but before that we have to use NVIDIA container runtime. So NVIDIA introduced that with uh, uh, Jetpack 4.2 and it's a container runtime that can take advantage of uh, the GPUs that are running uh, or that are part of the Jetson uh, family of products. So, and uh, eventually we have the DeepStream L4T containers deployed as pods uh, on these K3S clusters. And we'll see the live demo on how that's done. Okay. So now, okay, yeah. So this is the uh, environment setup. So here uh, you see four uh, nanos. So for this use case, we are just using one, but this is part of the entire setup that we have. Um, and it's a Jetson Nano developer kit. Um, 
one uh, barrel jack 5 watt uh, uh, 5 volt uh, 4 amperes power supply uh, one gpps ethernet switch uh, utp in ethernet cables for connectivity uh, to these nanos uh, the webcam that i talked about camera is connected to the nanos uh, with the usb uh, then is a display that's attached to jitsun nano via hdmi so uh, we can see uh, uh, when it detects any objects and what what's happening in the video frames and we are using the deepstream sdk 5.0 version so now, right, so now it's time uh, for the demo. What we're going to see is, uh, first of all, uh, we've connected to the Jetson Nano, and here we are going to uh, see what is the versions of the software, and then um, we are going to uh, quickly install a KTS cluster on top of it, uh, then deploy the Jetson uh, uh, Deepstream uh, L4T containers, and then um, we'll see how they uh, execute on uh, and how they detect the ob uh, um, objects and uh, do does video analytics. Okay. So here, let me just go quickly um, and show you the versions. So <clears throat> here um, we see that the Jetson Nano uh, developer kit we are using uh, L4T and Jetpack 4.4. Um, CUDA version is 10.2 uh, as we talked about and um, uh, it's based on Ubuntu 18.04. <clears throat> so now, right, so this is just a um, Docker um, version and info rather that what's the runtime. Uh, so right now, uh, <clears throat> the default runtime is run C uh, and the available one is uh, NVIDIA as well. So we are going to change it to uh, NVIDIA container runtime uh, in the Docker uh, daemon file so that uh, uh, when we deploy K3S, we can uh, use that runtime. So it's a simple uh, one line change. <clears throat> All right, so now we've changed the default runtime. We are now going to start restart Docker and all right. So now the default runtime uh, is changed to uh, NVIDIA uh, and just install curl uh, because uh, this is the first time um, uh, we are doing it from the scratch. So here, so all right, so this is done. All right, so now we'll install um, K3S um, on top of this. And uh, here, so while this is running, I'll explain. So uh, K3S by default comes with uh, container D uh, as its runtime, but uh, it allows you to uh, change the container runtime uh, to Docker uh, and uh, you can use to, um, uh, you can install the K3S and point it to your existing runtime. So it'll uh, let you do that. So with this install uh, underscore K3S exec, uh, we have uh, specified um, Docker and uh, we know that uh, internally we have changed it and pointed it to NVIDIA container runtime. That's the default one uh, in place of run C. So uh, it happens pretty quick, uh, but uh, maybe it's taking a while. So while it's downloading, um, we see that it, it's, uh, we are using the uh, 18.9 uh, version of K3S uh, here, uh, the stable release, and it is already uh, starting K3S on top of it. So, okay, all right, so now that's done. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the key, using kubectl, the version uh, of the nodes, and we see that it, uh, it has deployed uh, 1.18.9, uh, the stable release of it. And it's based on ARM64, since we are doing it on Jitsun Nano. All right, so now let's see, all right, so, um, what we are doing here is uh, we are executing uh, a default or a uh, yeah a default container, which uh, the uh, device query, which will tell us if uh, uh, it's able to access these GPUs uh, uh, on this Jetson Nano. So since we've installed K3S uh, on top of it. And now uh, we have run this uh, sample container, uh, the device query. So it will tell us whether it's able to access uh, this 
um, uh, GPUs uh, from the Nano. So if you see it detected one CUDA capable device, uh, NVIDIA Tegra, and now uh, it says the result is pass. So that means that it, and it also uh, tells us what are the different uh, um, versions, like CUDA driver versions, uh, how much is the GPU max clock rate, uh, the L2 cache size, warp size, and et cetera, et cetera. So now, uh, uh, since it has done that, and uh, it says, I mean, the result is passed, so it's able to detect that uh, uh, device and the GPUs. All right. So now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, create a YAML file. Um, so let's do that. Now, okay. So here, let me, all right. So uh, let's pause here for a second. So, okay, so let's uh, take a look at the YAML file for a sec. So uh, this is the, um, the image that we are using is uh, the DeepStream L40 uh, container image uh, that's available, uh, one of the many. Uh, so it's a sample image that we are using and we are uh, we have deployed it in the K3S cluster. So uh, when we uh, create it as a pod um, and deploy it as a YAML file, uh, it will automatically uh, pull and run that container. And uh, then we'll be able to query it and then do object detection, right? So this is the YAML file uh, for it. And now let's go out and right, so let's clear this thing, everything. And now we'll just apply the spot, all right? So it takes, it doesn't take a while, um, all right? So if we do get pods, we'll see that the uh, demo pod is now running. Uh, the other one uh, that it shows is the one that we ran earlier. So now, right. so we are going to go in the container. Uh, we are going to unset the display since it keeps looking for uh, a display, uh, even before it runs, and uh, that's why we, we need to do that. And now, uh, and now we are going to uh, run this uh, deep stream app with um, so the config file or the sample file that we are using is source one uh, towards the end USB uh, infrared net intake because uh, that's the one that is available uh, since we are using a USB camera. Right? So the error that you see uh, at the top is uh, deserialized engineering failed. Uh, that's because it, uh, it tries to look for the ionate engine. Um, that's for the uh, Xavier family of Jetsons. Uh, but uh, then it switches to uh, FV16 since it, uh, um, it's a nano, right? So that, that's just something that uh, you observed. All right, so once it that, does that, <clears throat> uh, we are going to see that uh, the uh, container is running and it says uh, pipeline is running, right? So now, uh, now it's running. So we are going to see how it detects the objects and how it uh, runs all of this uh, and does the analysis, right? So um, I'm going to switch to another video and it's a handheld recording, so two of them. Uh, and um, we'll see uh, the live uh, feed that we talked about. Um, and the already running video and the camera is capturing uh, that running video, right? So I'm going to switch over, over to that. Okay, so this is the uh, video and it's a handheld thing. So it will show us uh, the pipeline running and uh, let me play it out. All right, so it shows that the pipeline is running and now um, it goes to uh, here, so let me Pause it. Yeah. So it shows that uh, it's a, a, uh, aimed towards the parking lot. So it shows that there is a car uh, and uh, uh, it's able to detect that. So this is the HDMI display. And uh, we also see the camera that's uh, pointed towards the parking lot, right? And if you see a little closer, and we didn't plan that but there is a diff second car that's uh, in the background. So if I take it a bit behind, yeah. So we pointed it towards the parking lot. So it's able to take this one and uh, 
uh, I didn't see that there is another one here also. So it's able to detect that as well. Right? Uh, now this is the live video feed uh, that it was uh, running towards or rather uh, the camera is pointed towards the parking lot. So it's able to detect it. And now we are going to see another one uh, where it uh, uh, the video is playing on a monitor and the camera is pointed towards that and how it behaves. Right? Okay. okay, so this is the second one uh, here again. Uh, you see that um, the containers is running uh, when it shows uh, and it's able to uh, detect some of the frames. Now let's see what's happening uh, here. So this is the um, in setup that we saw earlier. Uh, these are all the devices, but right now we have connected it to only a single one. Uh, it's connected via USB. Uh, <clears throat> and so this is the video that's running on, on the screen and uh, our camera is pointed towards this uh, monitor. So there are a lot more uh, um, analysis that needs to happen, but it's still all happening in the same thing. So it's a busy street. So you see lots of people uh, that are uh, going and, uh, uh, and if you see it closer here, uh, it's almost like no lag. So these are the two screens that you see. One is where it's recording and here is where uh, it's able to show and detect the objects. So uh, let's see what happens on uh, this side. So it's a busy street with different types. I mean, there are people, uh, there are cars, buses and things like that. So, and this is the display. So it's able to detect that there is a person, there's a car that's going in, uh, even uh, the, all these uh, things it's able to detect pretty seamlessly. So, um, this actually uh, makes a compelling argument and all of this is running uh, on a K3S cluster and with these um, NVIDIA DeepStream uh, containers that are running and it's taking advantage of all the GPUs that are available through the ejection family of things, right? So uh, this concludes the demo and I have one more slide to share. So let me go there. All right, so we are uh, back on our slides. So, all right, so this is the last slide. So uh, if you have any questions or uh, uh, any collaboration opportunities, you can reach us at sw-ecosystem at uh, For any Project Cassini resources and blueprints, uh, you can check out this link. And for parsec related information, uh, you can check out the GitHub repo uh, and everything is available over there. So with that, uh, I would like to, to say thank you uh, for attending this uh, session and uh, I hope you've learned something new. Thank you so much.